sprite animation is taking a bunch of still images and showing them in a sequence, the same way old cartoons work. Each frame will persist for a set amount of time before displaying the next one. Since we have a function to render particular sprite sheet frames, all that we need now is to store the duration of each frame and a reference to which frame to render. However, we also want to create instances of animations so that we have different start times for each entity, as if we don't do this, then it'll look like every enemy of the same type is walking in lockstep. So for that, we'll utilize the same pattern as our entities and bodies. It's essentially an object pool. Create a new file called animation.h, import render.h, and we'll use this later. Since we'll need to store the frame data, the simplest way is to just store an array. We'll say that any one animation can have up to 16 frames. Okay, now for each frame, we need to know its duration and which row and column the frame refers to. The frames belong to some animation definition, which we'll create now. There's a reference to the sprite sheet, the array of frames, and the frame count. Since we need an instance approach to draw animations, we'll create another struct for that. The other struct will hold a reference to the definition, current frame time, and index. Whether this animation loops, whether it's active, and whether it's flipped, only supporting horizontal flipping. All right, now that we've got all the data types laid out, let's get into the function design. As with other modules, we're going to need to initialize our data storage. So we'll use a simple init function for that. We'll need a function to create and store definitions and instances with all the data parameterized. For the definition, we'll opt to pass in three arrays rather than one array of animation frame structs. This just makes the call site code easier to understand. To create an animation, we just need the animation definition ID and whether it loops. The flipping is handled in our update logic later. We'll create, destroy, and get functions, as well as a special function called animation update that takes in the delta time. Although this could just be accessed via the global. Time data is something that could be removed from globals, but we'll leave it for now. Copy and paste the function prototypes over to animation.c. All right, we're gonna need some storage for our definitions and animation instances. Make these static. The definition create function is pretty straightforward. We just populate a definition struct and append it to our list. Similar to definition create, the create function, but we also look for unused instances, just like with entities and bodies. For get, it's just a simple getter. And for destroy, we just mark the is active flag to false. Update is a function that needs to be called on every frame in order to advance the animations. For each animation instance, we need to decrease the current frame time. And if that goes to zero, increment the frame index. If the animation is on the last frame, we want to check if it loops and then switch back to the first one. Otherwise, we want to reset the index back to what it previously was, which is the last frame. Finally, we want to set the current frame time to the duration of the new frame. Over in entity.h, we're going to update our entities to have a field that keeps track of their animation ID. In entity.c, we just want to set the animation ID to the largest U size value. So that's negative one. This indicates that there's currently no animation associated with an entity. In render.h, we already have a way to draw sprite sheet frames, but we need some way to flip them horizontally so that when the character is walking left or right, the correct orientation is used. A simple way to do this is to just flip the texture coordinates based on a function parameter. So add a bool is flipped to the render sprite sheet frame function. Using this, we can flip the X axis UVs. So we'll open up render.c and do that right now. Finally, we want to test it all out. So open up main.c and the first thing to do is initialize the animation module. Next, we'll create two animation definitions and two animations. We want a walk animation and an idle animation. Get a pointer to the player and then set the animation ID. In the update loop, we want to set the animation to the walk animation when the player is moving and idle otherwise. We'll update animations just a bit further down. Then we'll need some way to render animated entities. So we'll loop through each entity, assuming they are active and have a valid animation ID. Then we need references to a bunch of data. We need the body, animation, animation definition, and the current animation frame. Then we'll just put a little bit of code in here to flip the animation based on the velocity. Finally, we render the frame. Just as with the other modules, we need to add animation to our build script. All right. After all that, we should see that our player character has a walking animation and stays still when idle. Catch you in the next episode, which will cover audio using SDL Mixer.